Where does the health and safety at work come from? And what does it mean to you? In the 1970s, there were growing concerns, both in and outside government, that the existing approach to regulating workplace safety was not fit for purpose. The previous approach was laid down in the 19th century. Things change. The UK's accident record back then will shock you. Around 1,000 people each year being killed as a result of work in the early 70s. Half a million more were being injured. The true figure would probably be much higher than this due to a recognised problem of under-reporting at the time. The government estimated that Britain's accident problem cost the nation some 23 million lost working days a year. The UK was in crisis. The requirement now was to review and make recommendations in relation to health and safety of, of people at work and the public in connection with their activities on industrial, commercial or construction sites. A committee for health and safety at work was appointed by Barbara Castle. At this time Barbara was the Secretary of State for Employment and Productivity. Today Barbara is recognised as one of the most significant persons of the 20th century. Look her up as she may surprise you with the changes she made to the UK. This committee was chaired by Lord Alfred Robbins and six other members, the Robbins Committee as it was named. Lord Alfred Robbins was an English trade unionist whose outlook was paternalistic, where he believed that an organisation or company should look after their employees well by making good decisions for them. This belief is what led to the Health and Safety at Work Act, that employers should protect workers and be proactive in thinking about the dangers they put workers in when asking them to carry out tasks. Previously, the law looked at prosecuting companies after something had happened, either injury or harm. They actually waited to someone died before they did anything. Lord Robin's committee report was controversial back in 1972, back in an era where production came before people. As I have already mentioned, 1,000 people per year killed. They arrived at a conclusion that apathy by employers and employees was the main reason for workplace accidents. Simply not interested. They recommended that overall responsibility for regulating safety and health should be rebalanced with employers and workers taking responsibility. Their argument that a more effective self-regulating system was needed and looked towards preventing injury to workers and production loss to the company. A proactive approach where employers and employees work together and that if they fail to do so it would be a criminal offence. The Health and Safety at Work Act was born. The Health and Safety at Work Act 1974 covers all employment activities apart from private domestic workers. The Act applies to employers, self-employed, subcontractors, visitors to places of employment, members of the public affected by the employer's activities, designers, suppliers, importers, employees, directors and managers. It provides the, the enforcers, the HSC, the local authority, environmental health officers to lay down the law if some companies deviate from the law. Employees are asked to take reasonable care of themselves and others. Employers are asked to ensure so far as is reasonably practicable the health and safety of their employees. In the UK today millions of millions of people go to work safely and come home safely day in day out as a result of this. Which part applies to you? Comment below. How many people do you think were killed in 2018 in the UK?